January 17th, 1966, 1030 in the morning, a Spanish fisherman watches a bizarre white spot falling from the sky and then silently landing in the Alboran Sea. Meanwhile, in the neighboring fishing village of Palomares, locals witness a completely different scene. Two gigantic balls of fire hurtling toward them at a tremendous speed. In a matter of seconds, the peaceful rural idyll was destroyed. Homes quaked from the shockwave, fragments cut through the ground, and debris rained down from the sky. For several weeks, newspapers worldwide reported on a terrible accident. Two American military planes collided in airspace over Spain. Those bombers were carrying nuclear payloads, and after the crash, four thermonuclear weapons, known as B-28s, fell near Palomares village. One of them dangled from a tree and was found intact. Two had their conventional charges detonate, leaving house-sized craters on both sides of the village and scattering radioactive plutonium across farmland. As for the fourth bomb, it was never located. This put the United States in an awkward position and the people in the area in mortal danger. The Pentagon turned to engineers at the Sandia National Laboratories in New Mexico to help determine where the missing bomb might have landed. The facts suggest it landed in the sea, but the exact coordinates remain unknown. It still hasn't been found to this day. And it's not the only nuclear warhead that's gone missing. Today, we know about 32 lost atomic bombs, and these are only the officially confirmed ones. So what makes those lost nuclear bombs so dangerous? And how is it possible to lose nuclear weapons anyway? After the first use of an atomic bomb to force Japan to surrender in the Second World War, the U.S. military geared up for a new era of nuclear warfare. This time, they were up against the Soviet Union. And even though this struggle was called the Cold War, both superpowers put their own existence at risk by conducting secret nuclear weapons tests. John Clearwater, an expert on the Canadian nuclear program, claims that in just the first 24 years of the atomic age, the U.S. and the Soviet Union lost 32 nuclear bombs in that deadly race. Undoubtedly, the Soviet Union posed the greatest threat to the United States then. However, there's a case where the U.S. almost detonated nukes on their own soil. On January 23, 1961, in North Carolina, a Boeing Keep-19 was on a 24-hour mission along the Atlantic coast of the United States. The plane was armed with two Mark 39 thermonuclear bombs. Each one had a yield of 3 to 4 megatons. When the B-52 was refueling midair from a tanker, the crew reported fuel leaking from the aircraft's right wing. The B-52 had no choice but to turn toward the Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in North Carolina for an emergency landing. During the descent, the bomber lost control and its right wing fell off. Wasting no time, the crew bailed out of the plane. Up in the air, the B-52 split in half, and two Mark 39 bombs were ejected. One of them slammed into a field at speeds exceeding a thousand kilometers per hour and ended up buried 54 meters deep. When that bomb hit the ground, three out of four safety mechanisms went haywire. The signal to detonate the nuclear core had already been sent. But fortunately, something went wrong and the charge didn't go off. But the scariest part of this story is that after the bomber crash, they never found the second bomb. Eight days after the accident, a team of sappers discovered a part of the warhead in a field, while the other part, the one with the nuclear payload, vanished without a trace. In hindsight, engineers concluded that installing the Mark 39 bomb on the B-52 aircraft was a big mistake. 
the military's negligence could have led to irreversible consequences. What if both bombs had really detonated? The explosion of two Mark 39 bombs would have instantly killed thousands of people in the crash zone in North Carolina. And according to radioactive fallout calculations made by the Nuclear Secrecy blog, the radiation could have spread across the entire East Coast, from Washington to Baltimore, Philadelphia, and even New York City. Looking at a map made by Andrew Wellerstein, American Institute of Physics historian, it's clear that millions of Americans would have found themselves in the danger zone. It's a miracle this catastrophe didn't happen. But how many similar incidents have been kept hidden from the public eye? Investigative journalist Eric Schlosser claims that he's uncovered at least 700 major accidents linked to the U.S. nuclear arsenal between 1950 and 1968. According to him, the government went to great lengths to keep nuclear weapons testing under wraps, mainly to prevent enemy access to weapon information. Right from the start, the first mission was shrouded in secrecy. The American Convair B-36 Peacemaker was the first intercontinental bomber able to carry nuclear weapons to any corner of the globe. And after months of negotiations, the military managed to persuade the Atomic Energy Commission to provide them with a Mark IV atomic bomb for testing. On February 13, 1950, a B-36 plane known as Flight 2075 took off from the Isleson Air Force Base near Fairbanks, Alaska. This test flight aimed to simulate a bombing scenario over a major city in the Soviet Union. The B-36 was supposed to fly 8,850 kilometers from Alaska to Montana, then to San Francisco, and finally land at the Carswell Air Force Base in Texas. However, shortly after takeoff, ice started accumulating on the bomber's fuselage. The excess weight of the warheads put an enormous strain on the engines, causing three of them to catch fire. The B-36 began losing altitude at a rate of 152 meters per minute. Following military protocol, the crew tried to ditch the atomic bomb into the ocean to avoid disclosing nuclear weapon testing. But when one of the pilots hit the salvo button to drop the bomb, nothing happened. On the second attempt, the bomb bay door opened, releasing the Mark IV over the Pacific Ocean. According to the crew's reports, that's where the bomb detonated. Fortunately, the pilots managed to eject. To locate their crew members and the wreckage of the bomber, the combined forces of the U.S. and Canadian military initiated a massive search and rescue mission that involved 40 aircraft. U.S. military officials interviewed the 12 surviving pilots, and each one confirmed that the bomb had been detonated before the crash. However, the U.S. Air Force search team couldn't find any traces of the bomb explosion or the crashed plane. The military concluded that the pilots had violated protocol and ejected without releasing the bomb. They believed the plane had plunged in the ocean along with the bomb. Three years later, a Canadian search and rescue operation initially looking for a missing oil worker stumbled upon the bomber's wreckage atop Mount Cologe. Turns out the plane hadn't gone down in the ocean after all. Only in 1954, a team of explosive experts finally reached the downed B-36, famously known as Flight 2075, to destroy the remaining secret equipment. It seemed like the end of the story, but in 2003, an investigative team led by John Clearwater headed to the crash site for their own assessment. They found that the bomb shackles that held the suspended weaponry on the aircraft remained undamaged. Clearwater concluded that the bomb had indeed been ditched before the crash and was supposed to detonate over the ocean. The problem was that search teams who had examined the incident site in the hours after the crash found no evidence of an explosion. So where did the atomic bomb disappear to? 
Clearwater is sure that the remains of the Mark IV are still lying deep on the ocean floor, though finding them after all these years is very unlikely. That means we may never know for sure what happened to that warhead. The Flight 2075 incident marked the first documented case of a missing nuclear warhead. Sadly, it wasn't the only one. And by the way, both the military and scientists know the whereabouts of some of these lost nuclear bombs, but instead of attempting to disarm them, experts have chosen to do nothing. What are they waiting for? Specialists say some of these lost nuclear bombs are better off left untouched. Otherwise, we may cause irreversible damage. On February 5th, 1958, a thermonuclear warhead known as a Mark 15 was loaded onto a B-47 bomber for an extensive training mission. Mark 15 is a hydrogen thermonuclear bomb with an explosive force of up to 4 megatons. This is roughly 190 times more powerful than the Fat Man bomb that destroyed Nagasaki in 1945. The goal of the mission was to simulate an attack on the Soviet Union. However, instead of Moscow, the bomber was supposed to fly over the American city of Radford in Virginia. But on the return journey to the base, the aircraft encountered another military training mission in South Carolina. The objective of that group was to intercept one of the B-47s. However, they didn't notice the second plane carrying nuclear weaponry. As a result, the B-47 with the atomic bomb on board was damaged. The pilot decided to drop the warhead into the water and then make an emergency landing. The bomb dropped from a height of 9,144 meters into the sea near Tybee Island. It's a miracle it didn't go off. Maybe the Big Bang didn't happen because the bomb was missing a crucial piece. The capsule, also known as the plutonium tip, was officially stated to be absent from the bomb because it was a training flight. Nevertheless, it could be added to the weapon at any time if needed. The military knew where to find the lost bomb, but argued there was no point in expending resources on it. After all, it didn't have a nuclear payload. But there is a version of events suggesting that the payload might have really been there. In 2019, in his book, researcher Christopher Baranato described how truly dangerous the Mark 15 could be. Baranato claimed that, according to the then Deputy Secretary of Defense testimony, the lost weapon was a fully functional bomb with a nuclear capsule. If that's true, the Mark 15 could still set off a thermonuclear explosion. It's believed that today the bomb lies on the seabed under four and a half meters of silt, but it still could go boom. For example, if it takes a hard hit. Christopher Baranato claims that if the bomb really contained a plutonium detonator, the explosion could create a fireball with a radius of over one and a half kilometers and devastate a significant portion of the coasts of Georgia and South Carolina. But what if the bomb lacks the plutonium part? Well, it could still go off and create a gigantic crater. There's also the chance that the explosion could punch a hole in the Florida aquifer, contaminating it with uranium and salty water. That aquifer happens to be the primary source of fresh water for at least four states, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. In 2001, the U.S. Air Force Nuclear Weapons and Counterproliferation Agency published a report on the lost Mark 15 bomb. They confirmed Baranato's concerns. The explosives inside the bomb could pose a serious threat. So it's probably best not to touch that warhead or try to lift it. But you see, letting things be is not always the best strategy. You'll get what I mean when I tell you a story that happened in India during the Cold War. Yes, you heard that right, in India. In those days, not only the US and the USSR felt the heat of the nuclear arms race. 
Residents of a village in the Indian Himalayas are sure that, due to past nuclear weapon experiments, dozens of populated areas are still at risk today. In 1964, China conducted its first nuclear test, which seriously concerned the U.S. In the region where the experiments were taking place, the Americans lacked satellite technology, so they couldn't properly spy on their opponents. The only way to keep an eye on China's activities would be a base in the Himalayas. So the U.S. government struck a deal with India to place a nuclear surveillance device on the summit of the Nanda Devi mountain. The mission was to install a plutonium-238 powered sensor and gather evidence of Chinese nuclear tests. In addition to the 56 kilogram nuclear device, they needed to transport a 3 meter antenna transceivers in short pulse generator to the summit. To handle all this equipment, there was assembled a team led by Indian mountaineer Mohan Singh Kohli. When the team almost reached the mountaintop at an altitude of 7,300 meters, they got hit by a snowstorm. To protect the nuclear device, the captain ordered his teammates to dig a hole in a snowdrift and place the equipment inside. Several months later, they returned and found that the device had vanished without a trace. It was swept away by an avalanche. Until 1974, the Nanda Devi mountain and the surrounding sanctuary were off-limits for expeditions. But in the late 70s, under pressure from the media, India's Prime Minister Moraji Desai disclosed the secret American Indian mission in the Himalayas. Starting from 1965, multiple search operations were conducted in the Himalayas, but the nuclear device was never found. And that's reason to be alarmed, because it contained radioactive plutonium-238 with a half-life of approximately 88 years. Unlike a nuclear bomb, the lost device can't explode, but it could trigger a catastrophe in a whole different way. For example, plutonium can contaminate the primary water artery of Bengal in the northwestern states of India, the Ganges River. For a long time, those were just concerns. But in 2021, during the Chamoli floods, local villagers claimed that the lost nuclear device led to the glacial breach in Nanda Devi. Around 50 people died as a result. But was that old spy device actually behind the Chamoli disaster? Scientists believe the flooding began when a chunk of glacier fell into the water and blocked the mountain stream. Later, the water broke free and a huge wave rushed downriver. Yet, the people in Raini village, nestled high in the Himalayas, are convinced it's not the glacier's fault at all. They think the lost device with plutonium is still up in the mountains, giving off heat that melts the snow and ice around it. In turn, the country's authorities argue that it's unlikely. Although they haven't found the device yet, there are still about 30 years left until the plutonium decays. This means that, at this point, it just can't emit enough heat to melt so much snow at once. But while this lost nuclear device has been sought for over half a century to prevent a potential catastrophe, certain organizations are hunting for atomic bombs for profit. On April 12, 1970, a fire broke out on the Soviet nuclear submarine K-8 during exercises in the Bay of Biscay. The vessel managed to surface successfully, and the captain ordered the crew to abandon ship. A towboat arrived at the scene and began evacuating the submarine to the shore. However, it was so damaged that it dragged the towing vessel to the bottom, resulting in the death of 52 crew members. The details of the tragedy remain highly classified to this day, but it's claimed that four of the 24 nuclear torpedoes on board are still operational. 
Alongside the remains of the ship, they rest at a depth of over 4,500 meters underwater, roughly 400 kilometers northwest of Spain. However, researcher Jeffrey Lewis claims that the hunt for the lost nuclear weapons is not over. After all, suspicious expeditions often appear in the areas where atomic submarines have sunk. What's important is that we can't allow nuclear weapons to fall into private hands, as in that case, a nuclear warhead or its components may end up in the possession of terrorist organizations. But sometimes, it's not just the treasure hunters who search for lost nuclear weapons. Governments are in the game, too. The sinking of the Soviet submarine K-219 in the Atlantic Ocean remains one of the most mysterious disasters of the entire Cold War. On October 3, 1986, there was an explosion and subsequent fire in one of the missile tubes on the submarine. The vessel wasn't towed to the shore in time and went down not far from the Bermuda Islands. This is where the most intriguing part begins. In 1988, Soviet research ship called Akademishin Mstislav Kildesh discovered the wreckage of K-219 using sonar. The submarine had been torn in half due to immense pressure, but several hatches of the missile silos were found open and the research team spotted clear tool marks. The submarine carried 34 nuclear warheads, each yielding one megaton. All of them vanished. The Soviet Union claimed that the accident happened due to a collision of the submarine with the American combat ship Augusta. However, the U.S. Navy flatly denied these claims. Despite this, there's a theory that the United States is responsible for stealing the nuclear weapons from that Soviet vessel. There's also speculation that a private company got its hands on the submarine's nuclear arsenal. After all, even if the warhead itself was damaged, its components could be sold for a tidy profit. I don't even know which of these scenarios scares me more. American researcher Jeffrey Lewis considers it unlikely we'll ever find the missing nukes. And not only because they might have already been snatched from the ocean floor, it's just incredibly hard to find them. To do that, you'd need to assemble search teams that would have to manually explore every meter of the ocean floor. Lewis says it's a grueling and inefficient process that would require the involvement of thousands of divers and hundreds of submarines. Fortunately, safety protocols have changed since the Cold War. Today, airplanes during exercises cannot carry nuclear warheads on board, though the exception to this rule still includes nuclear submarines. Currently, the U.S. operates 14 vessels with ballistic missiles. France and the United Kingdom have four submarines each. To function as nuclear deterrent forces, these vessels must remain undetected during their operations at sea. This means they can't send any signals to the surface so as to avoid revealing their whereabouts. They rely on gyroscopes that calculate the submarine's coordinates based on its last known position, direction, and speed. This system is far from being perfect as it often leads to accidents. For example, in November of 2018, a British nuclear submarine nearly collided with the Stena Superfast 7 ferry in the Irish Sea. And yet, Lewis believes that even though lost atomic bombs are extremely dangerous and could lead to numerous casualties and destruction in the event of a disaster, they're not what we should be most afraid of. There's a weapon that poses an even bigger threat. The explosion of a tactical nuclear bomb can render an area uninhabitable for several years, covering about 60 square kilometers. In the meantime, as a result of Russia's military aggression, the total mined area in Ukraine today reaches 174,000 square kilometers. That's like two Austrias, or just a bit more than the territory of the state of Florida. According to the Mines Advisory Group, as of 2023, Ukraine is the most heavily mined country in the world. 
30% of its land is littered with grenades, mines, and artillery shells. Experts estimate it'll take at least 10 years to fully demine these territories. The most challenging task will be clearing coastal areas, as we've already learned how difficult it is to locate objects on the ocean floor that lack special radio beacons. In total, 32 nuclear warheads have been lost in the world. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of conventional munitions are lost in Ukrainian soil, and they kill people every single day. So, are nuclear weapons really the most dangerous thing humanity possesses in the 21st century?